Hey, this is Michael. Oh, we're going to run through a simple example for the Arty S725 from Digilent uh, with Microblaze running an application out of VRAM, internal RAM. So we're going to start here with the block design. I won't run through the creation of the entire block design, but there's our Microblaze microcontroller. Uh, the first thing we need to do is make sure that within the microblaze we have enabled the local memory bus interfaces, both the instruction and data interfaces. Having done that, the DLMB and ILMB ports will appear on the microblaze instance. We're going to connect those ports to a local memory bus BRAM interface controller module. Well, I'm going to clock it at 100 megahertz. I'll go ahead and reset it with the same reset going to the microblaze. And in turn, we're going to connect that local memory bus BRAM interface controller to a local memory bus BRAM. The local memory bus BRAM, uh, we will size it but we don't size it through the instantiation here. We size it through the address editor. So in order to change the size of that memory, I go in and I find it in the address map. It's right here. And I can change its size uh, up to the, of course, maximum. Uh, 8K is about the minimum to run anything, and 128K is about the most you can get in the, um, the XC7S25 FPGA. I need to make that change in two places. I need to make it here for the instruction path, and I need to make it here for the data path from the host CPU in the microblaze. So I've set these both to 128. Let's see if I can move this out of the way. Convenient. Okay. Uh, once we've done with our block design, we'll go ahead and compile uh, and generate an XSA. Uh, and I drop that XSA into a folder named Vitus, which I've created underneath the uh, my project hierarchy here. So I have a folder containing the Vivado project, and I have a folder containing the Vitus project. And I've already generated the XSA by exporting it. So at this point, we'll go into what it takes to create the Hello World application and to combine the ELF from the Hello World application with the bit file that configures the FPGA. Uh, combine those into an image that's used to program the QSPY flash on the ARTI board. So here we go. All right, we're back. Uh, I just cleaned out the uh, Vitus folder here. So, so I was noting I create a folder named Vitus underneath the, the project hierarchy. I've got Vivado here in Vivado GUI, and I've gone ahead and uh, generated the bit file and exported the XSA. Uh, and that XSA has been dropped into this folder here. I've got two. Uh, Tickle scripts that I use to uh, uh, move this project along a little faster. It's, it's some rather long scripts that need to be run in order to generate uh, the various files used to program the QSPY flash. So here we go. I've opened up Vitus. I'm pointing to the Vitus folder and I'm going to go ahead and launch Vitus. All right, I'll create a new application project. Next, I'm going to create it from the hardware XSA. I'll go ahead and browse to that. Right 
right here. Go ahead and open that up. I'm going to give this a name of whatever default name plus platform. And I'm going to copy this just to simplify things. So I've just named my platform project name underscore platform. I'm going to name my app project name underscore app. And I'm going to name my system project name underscore system next create a standalone CPU bare metal no OS and I'm going to create the simplest application they have the hello world application finish and boom there we are I'm going to go down here and I'm going to go ahead and build it And just for good measure, I'll go into the platform. I'm going to double click on this .spr file. Click on board support package. Click on modify BSP settings. Click on standalone. And I'm just going to make sure that standard in and standard out are mapped to the Axie UART Lite host that was put into the block design. And they are. Okay, we're done. Now as a quick check, I can go ahead and run this application from Vitus. So I'll go ahead and open up TerraTerm. I've already set it up to uh, for the, the baud rate setting. And I'll go ahead and right mouse click, run, launch hardware. Let's quickly throw a uh, terror term up there if we can get there fast enough and there we go we've run hello world from Vitus by downloading the application uh, through JTAG so let's go through what it takes to burn that into QSpy flash and this is where the scripts that I have come in handy so I'm going to go back to Favado. I'm going to open up the Tickle console just a bit. And I'm going to go ahead and open up my Tickle script. So I've got uh, a Tickle script that generates a combined bit file uh, in which you combine the, the bit file uh, configuration bit file for the FPGA fabric which includes the micro blaze and all its all the peripherals and so forth uh, and it includes the ELF generated by Vitus for the application so we're going to combine the bit file the ELF into a single bit file which I've just named underscore combined or project name underscore combined uh, there's a memory map uh, inter information file that's used to map the um, the code that's going to be executed by the microblaze into the uh, local memory bus VRAM block that we've created and there's also a need to point to the instance name of the micro blaze in your block design. Sometimes this is a little tricky to find, but uh, once you know it, keep the name the same to make it easier the next time. Right? The next portion of this tickle script uh, takes the bit file, the combined bit file, and puts it into a format called MCS uh, with the right uh, base address and the right uh, parameters so that uh, when it's read out during configuration it's read out four bits at a time and so forth all right uh, I don't know why I can't run this script the way I used to run it anymore I'm just going to run it one line at a time so I'm going to copy that which is just this same set of of commands but laid out in a single line. I'm going to paste it into 
the Bovado window here and off it goes. So that's going to create the combined bit file. So we'll just check on what got generated. And there it is. That's what we just generated there. And then the next command will run, will generate the MCS file. So I'll go ahead and copy that, paste that into the tickle command line in Vivado here. And then we'll go back and check and see what happened. And there's the MCS file. There's also a PRM, a program, something or other. I figured out exactly what this stands for. Uh, but it's used to check that the uh, MCS was correctly burned. And then the next thing I'm going to do is program the flash, the QSPY flash on the, the Digilent uh, S7 board with the MCS file. And for that, I have a, a program flash tickle script. So I can just source, uh, I always forget. This is a lot easier. Copy and paste that. I'm just going to source that script. And off it goes. And it's programmed the MCS file into the QSPY flash on the RD board. And I guess this is taking a little longer than I thought. There we go. It's not a very big program. Suppose I could have sped up the uh, JTAG clock a little bit. Well, next time I'll cut this part out. All right, it's done. Program flash complete. So let's see what happened here. I'm going to go ahead and close Vitus so we're not cheating. And I'm going to go ahead and hit the program button, which will will reconfigure the FPGA from the uh, QSPY flash. And kaboom, there it is. We're running out of the QSPY flash on our microblaze. That's it. Take care.